All right, well, I uh, guess we'll get more people to uh, show up as we go along, so uh, let's get started. If uh, you're all ready. I really got to turn these sounds off. All right, so uh, this lecture was... Uh, <laughs> Hmm? Um, sure, if you want to go advertise, yeah, I mean, you know, have fun. Yeah, so this lecture was uh, going to be on uh, invasions and invasion testing, and it will definitely go over some of those, and it's uh, evolved into a more of a wider uh, attacking lecture and uh, how to attack groups. Uh, not only how to deal with invasions, but then once a group maybe isn't uh, entirely weak, but it's still there's still p potential. Yeah, I'm recording it. Don't worry. I'm going to upload it to YouTube uh, after we're done. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure more people will uh, join as we go. So let's get started. First off, we have uh, two games. One of them is my own. And uh, I think this is one my own. So this is actually a little bit off topic. Um, this is more Yose than uh, anything else, but I wanted to show it just to, especially those of you that were here and saw the, the Yose lecture I gave. This is a very uh, interesting Yose question. Uh, slightly off topic, but nevertheless, very valuable. So, he resigned here because, uh, well, he kind of died. But regardless, um, if we look at the upper right corner, we see an interesting bit of Yose. Uh, black would like to play A, and white would like to play B. So I would uh, like uh, any of you who would like to take a stab to take a guess, uh, do some counting, take some time if you'd like, and uh, tell me how, how big a, a Yosei move is this, A versus B? How many points is it worth? Uh, this is a good time, this is a good point to show off just uh, how big a potential Yosei move can be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're playing uh we're playing blackjack. Got to get to 21 without going over. <laughs> all right, is that all the guesses? Anyone else want to take a stab? All right. So, the correct answer, uh you're all going to uh maybe uh chuckle slightly at this. Uh, correct answer. <laughs> Whoa, final answer, huh? Correct answer, 18 points. Yeah, I know, right? So, okay, well, technically, so it's 9 points in reverse sente. So you double, you essentially double its effective value. That it's we can get into a whole long Yosei lecture. The reason being, uh, if we compare, well, yeah. So nine, nine is correct, but the cor the true correct answer would be nine in reverse sente. So obviously, if black gets the move, this happens. If white gets the move. Well, the assumption being is that black is going to Tanuki because uh, S14 itself isn't that large. So after that happens, though, this is Sente, and this is Sente. So we have these two Sente continuations. And if we compare the results between both sides, you have a nine-point difference. And because this is reverse Sente, because black can take it in Sente, but white cannot take it in sente, you double the value, making it an 18-point uh, Yosei move, which I found very, very funny, that uh, something as simple as uh, T16 versus T15 can be potentially larger than taking an open corner. Ah, well, see, yes and no, the move after your move, so you have to be very cautious when taking that line. It's only the move after your move is if the continuation itself is not sente. But the continuations are all sente. If you get the initial move, if white gets the initial T15 move, there is no maybe on uh, whether or not white will be able to make T, uh, S14 and uh, T14 in sente. I mean, of course, black could respond immediately if he really wanted, but then white's thrilled. White just got T15 in sente then. 
So assuming black doesn't immediately respond, white will get the other two moves in sente. So no, it's not counted in half. It's a gote with sente continuation. But uh, anyway, this was a slightly off topic. So on to the subject of the lecture, vital points in attacking. So right now, I think we have a very good situation. So this is a game that was uh, taken from... Uh, this was someone's game that I watched. They were around, uh, what, uh, three Q or so. And uh, looking at vital points. This is slightly off topic as well, but nevertheless, a, a very good thing to look at. Then we're going to really get into the meat of the lecture. So right here we have, uh, take a look at the board for a second. We have uh, a bunch of captures, a bunch of uh, somewhat strangely placed stones. But at the end of the day, right now, white has just made the move of Q2. And so now black has a big decision to make. Should black uh, just should black defend his corner maybe with uh, R three? Is there should black maybe do something on the top of the board? Is there something uh, huge elsewhere to play? What is looking at the whole board? What is the most valuable point for black to play right now? I'm open to any ideas. Fire away. Let's see. We got. Uh, R3, we got B17, we have O, O6, oh, obligatory Tengen comment, okay, sure. You want to do E10, and O10, O10. Oh yes, and T1, of course, We ha what, what lecture could possibly be complete without T1? Oh, and D11, all right, so this is a good variety of, uh, a good variety to look at. So, well, B is, B is uh, the, the, the raw point move for black to take, and undoubtedly, it, it's a very, very big move in terms of points. So the only way black could avoid playing it is if there is some sort of just incredibly huge vital point that black just has to play. So let's look at some of the other moves. Well, D here, D isn't that important because the, the P7 stone isn't really important because these three white stones around Q8, they're all captured. These stones are captured, so P, P7 isn't the cutting stone. No, this stone, the, uh, the P7 stone is not important. It does not matter what happens to this stone because black stones are already connected. So uh, the same could be said for the G. This uh, P9 stone also isn't very important because black stones, they're, all, they're not cut at all. They're already connected. Yeah, everyone likes eating stones, but uh, we want to eat valuable stones. Uh, R2. R2. It, could black play R2? Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah. I kind of stole your game, Griffin. <laughs> I thought it'd be a great example. I'm sorry. I would have asked you, but uh, you weren't online. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. But it's a really good example. <laughs> so right so looking at some of the other moves um c c is actually a very debatable move whether you should do c right now it's c is interesting you might be able to get away with c but before that i really think it's much more important to play f which is the vital point that black really, really, really needs to play. This move does so many things for black. It uh, destroys white's potential moyo. It threatens C10. It has a fairly decent connection to C6, it, or D6, the D6 group. It, it's very hard to attack. It does so many useful things. But let's say white decides, all right, I'm going to steal this 15 or 20 points in the corner. Well, white can certainly do that, but... Uh, if we look what happens afterwards, if maybe black threatens that, then uh, attacks the C10 stone, just uh, some variation like this, and, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, black says, uh, exactly, you know, what are white stones doing? E6 has become a, a floating uh, stick, and uh, C10 looks stupid now. So, yeah, uh, black is utterly thrilled with this, and white can take his extra 15 points in the corner, and black wins the game. And so... Yeah, this is a uh, E10 is just a, a screaming vital vital point. 
So D11 was actually a move I considered a lot. This is a, this is a more severe option than uh, the E10 move. I mm, I would like to play it. I, I guess the, my, my, my thing is I would like to play it, but it's fairly more dangerous to play. It can't be easy, as easily connected. White might consider attempting a counterattack. It's, it's needlessly complicated, I guess I would say. It, uh, it gets needlessly complicated. I, I'm not a big fan of it, although I can't say it's a terrible move. So these were just uh, two games I wanted to look at. So let's get with on, on to the uh, central point of the lecture, which is attacking groups. So we have this game which is a fairly simple uh, combination. The players have started out playing. Uh, fairly simple move order. And now we have ourselves at a certain point in the game, and uh, both sides have, what, uh, six stones on the board. It is Black's turn. So it is Black's turn, and White has these three stones on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes two stones in a row. Ha, 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 ha. It's, uh, yeah, mo the numbers weren't right. Okay, give me a break. So, white has these three stones here, and it is black's turn, and black wants to decide uh, an effective way to attack these stones. So, after looking at the whole board, because the attack changes based on what's going on with the rest of the board, what might be a good attacking move for black, uh, for black to do against white here? Let's see some ideas. We have R12, R or, oops, R12, R13. We have E11, E11. Maybe I'm seeing things. Q12. Let's see. Must be blind. Ah, Q12. And N10, N11. All right, these are a good selection of uh, moves to look at right now. So, so A and B, A and B are a fair invasion move sometimes, but uh, in this case, they're not really that effective, especially because White has this uh, P11 stone. I mean, Black could do this and manage to connect himself under, but uh, mm, at the end of the day. Yeah, it kind of helps White. I mean, Black ends up weakening his uh, upper right corner, and Black doesn't really gain that many points on the right. It's true, White doesn't have a base, so you do cut out the base, but, uh, you know, White's out into the center, and uh, Black's R16 stones are substantially weakened. So, yes, you steal the base, but just because you steal the base doesn't mean your move was amazing. You can't chase this group, no. No, you, 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 you can't chase this group. It's it's pretty tough. Um, yeah, your 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 upper right corner is not very happy with uh, this situation. You have S14, which is uh, can get underneath. Yeah, it's pretty hard to attack. I mean, so yeah, you can rip out the eyes, and sometimes it's good, but the center is just way too open to for me to really like that move. So this is a classic technique, and sometimes this is a very good technique. What's uh, the next move? Very common, t very good to know. Next move for black. Not R12, no. R12 is a very bad shape. R12 is going to get your shape beat up. Mm, Q13, not quite. No, R13 is a little nice. I mean, white's just going to go like this and connect. Let's see, Q13, I mean, that works, but, you know, white stones are still connected, or like uh, this. So it doesn't really do that much. S13, yes, S13 is the move. It's a very nice move to uh, disconnect the stones. So, so yeah, R12 here does work, but, I mean... Yeah, so, I mean, you can work with it, but, I mean, really, you know, <laughs> Black just gets <laughs> kind of beat up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's the thing. That, that's why you don't want to cut directly. The shape is weak, and so White just is thrilled. Well, yeah, so this is the basic idea. 
So then if white does, I mean, if white does this, you know, black can just disconnect them outright. If white does this, sometimes black just does this, and now white's still kind of floaty. So that's not a terrible move, but uh, it just gains white. Uh, the, the problem with it is uh, black just still manages to, or, or white manages to, still manage to escape into the center relatively easily. And the territory on the top isn't 100% yet. I mean, there's still an invasion potential in the upper right. So we can't say that black has gained hugely. If the center were stronger, I, I might like this more. And this can be a good technique when the center is stronger. But in this case, the center is wide open. Oh, well, yeah, S13. Uh... So let's see, N10. So th those aren't, that's not a bad idea. Actually, the right move here can be a little counterintuitive. But uh, we're going to take a look at why it's a good move. The right move here is the cap. The cap is just awesome here. Yeah, the cap is very, very effective. Now, at first, it looks like, well, gee, why would this be a good move? I mean, white can just run out the middle. Well, let's see what happens. So, yeah, white can run out the middle. But uh, what does black do? Any ideas? Black plays bingo. Perfect. Black plays N8. Excellent move. Now white does this. All right, black to play. Any ideas? Black has a really good flexible move here. Preferably a little light. Mm, L8, not so much. L11, perfect. Yes, L11 is awesome. Now if white tanukis, black's just going to do this and say and just start laughing at white and tell him to go resign to the game and cry to his mom because, you know, the game kind of ends from here. So what White needs to do is something to get himself out. Any ideas what White should do to uh, get himself out? Yeah, the wedge. Perfect. Yeah, the wedge works. Wedge is great. But the problem is, even after this, let's see, you know, White pushes himself out. And now black can just take himself the corner, and white manages to escape. But the problem is, uh, black is this is the best really white can hope to escape with. But black is still pretty thrilled with the result. Yeah, I mean, black makes points at the bottom, points at the top. You know, white's invasion can probably be considered a bit premature. Also not handled that very, very well. Now, let us say, for the sake of argument... If uh, black attempts this instead of a, a move like that, and does this, this uh, still isn't very good comparatively. I mean, you take a few points, but uh, white basically does this, and uh, yeah, white is is very happy to have escaped so easily, and the corner still has Aji. So yeah, th this cap here can be a very effective attack. Now, if white tries to do something like this, this this isn't going to uh, end very well for white. Um, it's very, very hard to get out of there. Actually, you can play even more solid than that. You can just do this. And so, you know, okay, <laughs> what does white do? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> congratulations, white just built black a moyo for him and gained nothing. Yeah, yeah, white, white should resign here, yes. That was a terrible idea for white. So this cap here, it, it can be a counterintuitive move because it doesn't seal off 100% either side, but it forces white into a very, very narrow path. Right, it forces white to pursue some sort of very, very narrow path where black can manage to make lots of points on whichever side white wants to play at. So black ends up very happy. But this, is a, this kind of move isn't good everywhere. It's only because the center is so open here that uh, this can be such an effective move. So, let's go on to uh, next problem. Oops, where is it? Here. So, we have this situation, and instead of doing a, a, a jump like he should, now in this situation, what, well, what might be a good move for white if white did want to play locally? What would be the move for white? Any ideas? P10, P10, P12, P8, 
eleven. People seem to be liking these moves a lot. Okay, th these are good moves to look at. So p12 is a little bit dangerous here for uh, for white to be doing. Um, the main reason being his group here isn't safe. So when black splits him in half, uh, r11 might not be the happiest group in the world. Uh, this... Mm, this might be possible. This this isn't a terrible idea, I suppose. Yeah, wh why might play that? But the simplest way for white to play is uh, uh, P10. It's uh, safe. It's secure. It uh, threatens to attack uh, R12 very severely. And it uh, makes white very safe in the center. So, white has decided, however, that he is arrogant and that he's not going to play that and he's just he thinks his two space extension is the most powerful thing since sliced bread and so he's going to ignore it and so now you are black and you have to decide how do you attack white stones what might be a, a good move dude you just rip out the base from underneath sliced bread is powerful i agree no you you really can't mess with it so let's see we have a uh... S9. Oh, let's see what choices we got. We have S9. We have Q9. We have P10 once again. We have Q Q8. P7. Lots of fun choices. Okay, Th these are good moves to look at. Murray Rothbard lectures. I, I don't know. No, no idea. <laughs> no idea. Okay, so let's look at these moves. These are good moves to look at. So first, let's take a look at the uh, the base ripping move of uh, D. So this does indeed rip out the base, and there's not really much white can do about it directly. But the center here is just, you know, wide open, right? So black steals the few points, but what's he going to do now? I mean, white's safe. Well, not 100% safe, but there's no way black can attack this group very hard. The center is wide open. So that's the end of black's attack. White's shape is relatively strong, and uh, that's the end of it. Not, probably not the best attack he could do. So next, uh, A and C are very good options to look at. Sometimes they can be superb moves. Let's, uh, if we look at this one, the general idea behind this move is now, what's the move for black to play? What's the technique? Yep, there we go. Q7, and then white wedge is in there. Yep, and then black does this. And this is the basic idea. The problem is, and then this is the final continuation usually, the problem is uh, there's not really much of a moyo there. I mean, N N3 kind of just looks awkward in this situation. Better if, uh, yeah, and we would want R12 to be a little stronger too. But yeah, Black's just not really making a huge moyo in the bottom right. So this uh, isn't the ideal way to attack here. So the other way, so this certainly has uh, its merits. This is, a, this is a better way of doing it. But still, so this is a little bit better because it's very clear the next move that uh, Black wants to play. And this isn't the bad way to play. You can make a moyo like this, but there's a few parts of the moyo that uh, uh, makes me a little bit uh, feel a little bit awkward. But nevertheless, this is not a bad result for Black to have. Still, there's a move here that's even better. And that is your opponent's vital point is my vital point. Yes. P10 is a downright sadistic attack here, and it is surprisingly difficult to deal with when you think about it. So let's take a look at why. Why is it such a, a, a difficult move for white to deal with? Well, if white tries the obvious thing, obviously to split him in half, let's see. What, what should black do about it? Black has just been uh, cut right down the middle in half. Any ideas for black to play? Black should do P13. Hmm. Any other ideas? O12. 
the other knight's jump. Anyone else want to throw in an opinion? P12. Alright, these are uh, three good moves to look at. Uh, Q12. Alright, let's, uh, let's look at these four. So first we have uh, C. The problem with this is it's a little too thin for black. Black has a lot of cutting points here, yeah. This can be very, very problematic. I mean, if black tries this, this is just going to end up uh, wildly hard for black to manage to fight with. So many cutting points. So uh, A, A isn't a terrible choice. But uh, first of all, it, we, we can't really say it secures territory 100% or at least a huge amount of territory, because potentially if white wants later, white might consider doing this. And it doesn't quite work yet. But uh, it, there's annoying Aji with this combined. It's, we can't say it's 100% territory. Also, P, P10 is kind of weak. So, I mean, if we tried, for instance, a similar technique to what we did in one of the previous problems, it uh, doesn't look as great for black. I mean, N3, once again, it's kind of looking a little strange. It, it's not the easiest Molyo to develop. The stones are a little bit awkwardly placed. So I'm not a big fan of this for, for black. It's not terrible for black, but not the best way to handle it. So this move, we, we have this kind of attacking move. The problem with this, though, is uh, R12 is very weak. So, I mean, at the, at the minimum, you know, white might consider this and then uh, basically just aim for splitting these two stones in half later on. And something along these lines and try and uh, attack like this. It seems difficult for black to really get a good attack. And I don't really know what black's two stones in the center are really doing. I mean, white's not going to die anytime soon. And uh, white can't be really sealed in very easily either. So it's a little bit awkward. D, the problem with D, D is very rarely the best move for black because it's provoking white to hurt uh, P10. And you rarely want to, with an attachment, forcibly, uh, you know, force your opponent to a move uh, to hurt you, especially by touching. I mean, in comparison like this, at least after this, uh, black stones are a little bit trickier potentially to attack. They're very similar in the end. But uh, in actuality, what we want to do is this. This is a great, 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 great technique to know. Yes, this is a classic Tessaji. And a very, very, very good one. It looks very strange when you look at it. But let's see what happens. Well, let's see Black White tries the obvious move. White's just going to cut off Black Stone from his friends. It does look a little strange. Yeah, I know. Let's see. So white goes up and then black reads the liberties. Or white reads the liberty fight and looks, says, oh, I'm going to win. Well, white can certainly win the liberty fight here. But let's see what happens. So congratulations to white. He has won the liberty fight. You know, congrats. And <laughs> what has he gained for himself? My God, he, he still needs another move to live. I mean, he doesn't even have two eyes yet. And Black has gotten himself massive, massive profit. So that that's a, that's kind of a, I guess what we could call a, a god-awful result. Um, so, But let's say White decides to prevent that by playing this awkward move. And then White's going to go cut. Well, this isn't a horrible result for White. But we can't say this is a great result for White either. I mean... Uh, this is pretty much a one-way street. Not really much any variation. And, uh, yeah, white, you know, black still has a peep to play. And, you know, white stones, I mean, they're safe. But black has gained a massive amount of points in the process. Get himself a great corner. And R12 isn't even that weak. I mean, if black really wanted, he could play another stone to fortify it. But there's still bigger moves on the board. But, uh, yeah, white is not the most thrilled person in the world right now. He's very, very un unhappy with himself. So if... Uh, yeah, exactly. So let's say, to stop that, White's just going to do this.
So it's very, very hard here for, uh, even though white has managed to escape himself from the center, black stones have a lot of flexibility. Uh, black stones, first of all, can connect to either side. Um, also, I mean, black still has a, you know, this might look like a weird move, but it's actually a, a vital shape point in terms of uh, attacking white stones. White stones are very kind of floaty. Um, yeah, white can't be happy with this kind of result. But, uh, you know, even if white is scared of making a sacrifice like that, sometimes all white needs to do is just play a little more passively. This is not as good a result, but if you need to play safely as black, this is uh, workable. You've stolen the base, and uh, you've made this uh, exchange, which has made uh, white stones kind of uh, kind of awkward looking at best. So yeah, th this is possible as black. But no, the power of the cap here is just uh, very powerful. But the thing you have to remember about the cap is that it's a move that you need to make sure you've read carefully to uh, use correctly. If you use the cap in a situation where when white pokes through like this, you don't have a good you, you don't have a good continuation, the cap can really backfire on you. So you, you really need to be careful about when you use it. And now if white tries some sort of, you know, uh, move like this to just escape, you know, black can still do this and steal the eyes out from under him. And white can, you know, maybe fix his shape like this, but uh, we, we can't say white is thrilled here. White might have uh, connected his stones, but, uh, I mean, black is uh, making himself points everywhere. Um, yeah, I, I would not be a happy person if I was white right now. Not at all. Yeah, white's still so weak, and black is just making points everywhere. Exactly. So, I, I thought that was a, a very good situation to look at uh, when using the cap is uh, effective. Let's see, where's the next one? Ah, here we are. This is an interesting situation. So, stopping the cap for a second, we have this game going on. We have this game going on, and uh, both sides have been playing, and now White decides that he's going to make eyes at Black's expense, and I'm sure you've had all sorts of situations in your games where you have this uh, four, this uh, high enclosure, and someone just plays this low second line submarine move, and just gets really, really annoying to deal with because you feel like you're losing your entire corner and not getting enough compensation. This is also a very common handicap move, by the way. Um, playing really long slides like this are one of my absolute favorite techniques in terms of handicap games. Uh, they're very, very annoying when you don't handle it right. No, this is not your game. This is uh, not your game. So, any ideas? Uh, white or Black to play to deal with uh, White's move. Let's see what ideas we got. We have our 6. We have our 5. We have S7. Well, right. Yeah, I know. Everyone hates this move. This is why, you know, we got to learn how to deal with it. We have R7. We have S8. Wow, we have just uh, every move under the stars. Jeez. Well, they can't all be right. I mean, I'm sure one of them is probably better than the others. Mm, K1, yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, Q2. Thank you for your uh, excellent suggestions. Would you like another cookie? I mean, is that what you need? Do you need another cookie? Yes, you can have a cookie. Would you like a sugar cookie or, or a chocolate one? No, no, sorry, you don't get chocolate. You get sugar cookie. Punishment for saying bad moves. <laughs> no, 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 you don't get claps this time. No, 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 no. You have to wait. You have to really earn the claps. Okay, anyway, back to back to the game, back to the game. Yeah, Q3 is illegal. <laughs> no, no clapping. Okay, so let's look at these moves for a second. So first off, let's look at uh, let's look at B. So this uh, this can keep the corner, but uh, what's going to happen is White's going to play right here, and then Black's going to play here, and then White's going to play here, and uh, White's the, and so Black keeps his corner, and Black can, we can't say Black is uh, horrified by this result. But uh, white stones are, yeah, white stones are connected and safe, and white's, uh, white gets some shape, and his two floaty stones now have a base for themselves. So white is white got what he wanted out of this, and uh, he's pretty happy. So this is a little bit too nice. Yeah, uh, th it's being too nice to white. So let, let's take a more uh, severe move. Uh, this. 
S7, this is a very severe move. This, uh, I can't say this is an awful move, but this is a, I guess I would call it a needlessly complicated move. I mean, this is just going to get very, very, very complicated for both for un, 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 uh, when you don't need it to be. And it might end up good for black. It might end up good for white. It's uh, difficult to say. But uh, either way, white's going to get probably a decent result out of it. Anyone say Q8? No, no one said Q8. Um, You don't need to do Q8, though. No, don't do Q8 first. Well, the peep is a tempting move. But uh, it doesn't really work that well here. Now R6. Well, I mean, well, I'll explain why I don't like the peep first in a second. But uh, see, so yeah, let's look at this move. So this is also still a little bit too nice. So if uh, black insists on trying to cut, you're going to get something like this happen. And then there's this interesting co that white can consider. And if black, uh, if white really wants to just, you know, fight it out to the death, you can play like this. And, uh, yeah, it can get uh, pretty wild. Uh, it's a pretty insane fight from here for both sides. Or if uh, white wants to play safer, he can just do this. There's no reason to be complicated. White doesn't need to play any sort of, uh, you know, insane moves. White just does this, and uh, he makes himself, uh, you know, great shape. Nothing complicated, and he gets a little monkey jump slip in at a T12, and uh, White's rather happy with himself. So that's also a little bit too nice. We want a nice, simple move that uh, just uh, clearly looks like it's going to disconnect Blackstones, and the answer for that is A, R6, which is a very, very powerful move right now. So White naturally is going to respond with a S6, and now we have a, once again, we need a good technique for black. Any ideas? Black to play? Let's see, we have a R8. I wish I found the divine move. We have a S7. We have Q8. We have S8. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone loves to be heard about uh, their, their uh, all caps because, you know, when you use all caps, that just makes you sound so much more authoritative and uh, really, really smart, you know. So you guys should just keep doing that. <laughs> exactly. No problem. I'm always happy to have uh, spirited players. How great if I just started? Come on, guys. It's like a grade school. It's like a, you know, the teacher says, oh, don't do this. And then everyone says, oh, my God, I have to do it now. <laughs> oh, you're holding shift. Well, exactly. Okay. Okay, have fun with your capitals. Okay. So let's, uh, let's take a look at some of these moves. So A, this is an interesting move, actually. Um, hmm. This is an interesting move. I'm... Mm, interesting. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of it, though. I mean, you can get this little wedge in, but uh, after white gets this, it seems like, I mean, black and block here, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it just seems like white manages to get out a little bit easier than black would have wanted him to. And white's shape isn't perfect, but uh, black still needs to make a move around uh, S3 if uh, he really wants to uh, seal him off there. So, let's uh, see a few of the other moves. Um, B. Ah, this is a very, very good move, and this is actually the correct answer. Right, Black wants to uh, severely work to cut off his stones. So, what should, uh, what techniques does White have to try and uh, screw with Black? Yeah, S8, of course, is the obvious choice. So, white can technically connect like this, but uh, we can't really say white is thrilled. I mean, first off, black can do this, and white has zero eyes thus far. Um, also, the reason, also going back to the reason why I don't like the peep, this wedge can be very, very deadly later. There's a, a lot of Aji that you can use uh, with this wedge potentially later. 
So I don't. I didn't want to use the peep because you might want to play A directly. So, hmm, ah, cut. Someone suggested the cut. The cut is also difficult for uh, white to make work. Ah, yeah. So the cut is possible, but uh, white still can't say he's thrilled. I mean, after this, white still needs to uh, make himself live in the corner. And after this, uh, white's center is just really weak right now. We, uh, white should probably feel a little awkward here. His stones are not exactly thrilled with uh, this turn of events. Black is pretty happy in comparison. White might have taken the corner, but uh, his center stones don't really have that much shape and are kind of floaty. So that's a pretty good way of dealing with this kind of situation. Let's uh, take a look at the next one. Ah, so this is a really, really interesting one, and I think uh, shows a lot of interesting principles. So we have this kind of situation. Black has uh, kicked white, and white has played two, which is a little bit, uh, well, we could go into a whole discussion of uh, playing N16 versus O16 and the, the benefits and the costs. The main point being, white wants to put slightly more pressure on uh, L17 than he does with uh, O16. And he wants to push himself slightly more to the left to get out to the center easier. So white uh, plays the little two move. Black just jumps to three, white jumps to four. And uh, now we have the present situation as black. And so you are the black player, and you have to figure out, uh, looking at the whole board, what should black do? Any ideas? Let's see, we have uh, some players who say P10 is the move. We have people who say Q11 or P11. Resign, that's a powerful move. Hmm. Let's see, we have N12. Oh, another cap, okay. P12. Okay, these are a uh, good selection of moves to look at. Okay, so seven. Hmm. F seventeen. Ah, and R eight. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these moves. So um, it's very tempting for Black to want to approach this stone. And no doubt it's a big move, but uh, one of the problems is black will respond like this, and now, or white will respond like this, and now black one needs to respond because uh, this stone's in danger. And if he doesn't respond, it's going to come under severe attack. Right. C7 is a great response, sure. As C6, if you want, it gets more complicated. But the main point being, at the end of this, white is going to get a critical sente. And that sente is uh, not exactly going to be great for black. Um, you know, the simplest way for white is just to just to jump out with the stone. It's a very simple way. And now it's very, very difficult for black to launch an attack on either white group. They both have a potential to get out pretty easily. It's uh, uh, mostly a tanuki. So let's go back to the original situation. The cap... The cap is an interesting move, but my problem with it here is that uh, once black uh, gets out like this, it's uh, hard to see what exactly N12 is going to do. I mean, R10 still has a substantial amount of uh, flexibility to it. It can't make a two-space extension, but it can make a one-space extension to either side. Yeah, and uh, N12 just looks kind of floaty. I mean, uh, it doesn't really, uh, not that effective for black in this situation. So let's look at some of the other moves. Uh, this move, this isn't a very good move. Um, it's a little bit too nice to white. I mean, one thing, if white just really wants to be simple, white can even just respond like this and threaten to steal black's corner. And then black's lower right, white is just aching to play something like R3, which would make all of black's stones horribly inefficient if he got to invade the uh, lower right corner. So this is not a not a great way for black to attack them. So this leaves us with a A, C, E, and B, which all have the idea of uh, separating the two stones by doing some sort of attack 
against uh, R10. So it comes down to a matter of uh, how forceful exactly you want to or how forceful you need to be. So let's take a look at some of them. So this uh, this still feels kind of floaty. I mean, it's a fifth line move, so it doesn't really get white or black any uh, real territory, and it might provoke white to play this. But uh, R10 still has a lot of flexibility to it. Even if black does something like this, I mean, white stones are just not going to die anytime soon. I mean, they're 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 alive in this type of situation, and it's uh, not exactly easy to attack white stones in the center either. Heck, if white wants, he can even do this and threaten black stones here. And if black wants to launch an attack against R10, then white will launch an attack against uh, L17. And uh, it, R10 is really hard to kill. Or it, it's it's very hard for black to keep the whole you know right side. I mean, there's so many open points. Even if R10 dies, maybe R17, R3, it, we can't say it's really safe. Black stones are so high. We can't say it's really secure yet. So, uh, ah, the cap. Oh, O13. O13, I'm sorry, I missed that. O13 is a very forceful move against uh, N14, and it's probably naturally going to uh, produce something like this in response, which I suppose isn't terrible, but uh, once again, it feels like uh, L17 is being pretty threatened right now, and R10 still has a lot of flexibility. Still has that one space extension on both sides, still could probably manage to... Uh, just barely slip into the center, so it it's uh you know it's still really really hard to attack. So I'm uh oh I know I have audio it's a uh, it's a miracle, they finally gave it to me. I only begged them for weeks and weeks. Oh God. Anyway, <clears throat> so going back to the situation, actually the best move for Black here is a shoulder hit. It's a very very forceful move. And uh, now it's something, it's a semi-attachment move. Yes, okay, now you do get a cookie of your choice. Okay, yes, now you get a chocolate chip cookie. Congratulations. Everyone, please uh, clap an applause for right, Cousin. He got himself another cookie. <laughs> don't give him too many, <laughs> yeah, don't give him too many claps, though. You, you'll start to make his uh, ego too big. <laughs> Undoubtedly, you could get a lot of cookies. Right, right, right. Are you the cookie monster? <laughs> oh, come on, no Dragon Ball Z references. <laughs> okay, okay, come on. Back to the game. Back to the game. So, let's say, for the sake of argument, that uh, White decides that he's going to run with the uh, R10, because if Black gets uh, Q10... That's a very severe move. So white's going to try like this, and uh, what does black do now? Any ideas, uh, black to play? We have 11, we have cap. We have hit his head. We have uh, P11. We have R8. Oh, actually, uh, flip the board over. Yeah, great move. Actually, the simplest move here is the best one. Pure and simple, P10 is a great, great move here. Because uh, right now you are threatening to do two very, very, very big things. You're going to threaten either A or you're going to threaten uh, B. And if uh, you threaten A, you're almost going to be killing O17. If you get B, you're basically going to be sealing white into a relatively small area. So let's say white decides that he's going to run. Black can keep up the chase. White has to jump again. And now black just takes this move. And so this is a fantastic way for black to launch a leaning attack against white. If white tries to push himself out here, he's just going to end up hurting his own group. If, uh, yeah, black has hardcore profit. If uh, white continues jumping, black's going to do this and just try and annihilate white. I mean, there's still a little bit of Aji. Maybe white can live, but uh, nothing like it was. 
And white center is still weak. And black is just dying to play f17 soon. And uh, yeah, yeah, d16 is just kind of alone, sitting around, wondering what's going to happen to it. So let's say instead of this, uh, white jumps. Black can still do this. But uh, then this happens. If white jumps directly, black is still thrilled to get this result. And uh, white is still very sad. So the, the good thing to know about the shoulder hit here, the shoulder hit is a, it's like a semi, it's a half attachment. So, you know, it's, it's a very, very strong forcing move. And you're going to potentially end up making your opponent's stone stronger with it. But it's also great for leaning attacks. If your opponent has two weak groups and you want to split them in half, and one of them is a, could be potentially threatened by a shoulder hit, you know, you, you can play it and it's just, you know, it's the flow of the game, basically. Forces white to play q10, which forces black to play p11, which forces white to play m13, which forces black to play right here, which forces white to jump out, which forces black to play this. You know, no move is, uh, I guess you could say, out of order. They're all just uh, natural moves, and through them, black has uh, destroyed white's position. A very effective attack. Is p11 too loose? Hmm. Well, p11 is the move here. What do you mean, is p11 too loose? Oh, instead of q11. Hmm. Well, it's a lot less forceful against uh, r10. I mean, if, uh, you know, if black does this and we do the same thing, so, we you know, we're in this situation. And before, black played uh, q10. But, uh, so, what does black play now, right? There, there, there's no easy follow-up for black to do. What if white p9 instead of nobi? White uh, p9 instead of nobi. What's so this? Is uh, this what you were talking about? Uh, yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, there's still forcing moves, first of all, that uh, black has. For example. Yeah, it's still a splitting attack. And white can do this, or, or black can do this, and, uh, you know, white's not going to be very happy. Oh, p9, I see. Ah, it's a slightly lighter way for white to play, I suppose. But uh, even though black can't uh, do any forcing moves like earlier, um, I still don't, can't say that uh, black is truly, th or, or white is truly thrilled with this kind of result. I mean, first of all, black can still end up playing something like this if he wants. And uh, if white is willing to let black play uh, 09 here, that's just going to be painful. God, painful. So bad. Yeah, yeah. White is just not going to be thrilled either way. I mean, it's it, it's very, very frustrating for white. Well, the point is, isn't the specific move. The point is black is leaning on this, uh, P, this R10 stone and forcing it to respond. And uh, by doing so, he's weakening uh, N14. Well, yeah, he can scoop the corner, but uh, scooping out, you know, when when Black plays Q6, he knows that the corner might not be his. I mean, the intention behind Q6 is you're just saying, I don't mind if I don't get the corner. You know, Black may end up being stuck in down to the center, but that's okay with Black because he, he the star point, you know, doesn't have to get the corner to be a, a playable move. I mean, that's, uh, you know, the whole point behind it is it, it can be perfectly fine in the center. So yeah, white might carve out the corner, but black's in, or white is in a lot more pain than uh, black would be if his. Uh, and yeah, Q six is working pretty well here. It's working a lot better than R six would be. But uh, yeah, the main point is you're launching a splitting attack, which is rather painful. So uh, let's take a look at uh, where's that next one. Ah, here it is. So this is a good situation. If we uh, look at the board, we have uh, both players having played. Yeah, splitting attacks are very, very hard. No, no, it's it's uh, 
There's nothing wrong with that. I, I still make stupid mistakes when I attempt to do splitting attacks. They are uh, potentially difficult. So this is not necessarily a splitting attack. What we have now is a weak white group, and uh, it is Black's turn. And so Black wants to figure out, well, how do I attack these stones? Any ideas? Black to play? How, how do you attack these stones? Are they attackable? Do you cut out their eyes? Do you keep them out of the center? What do you do? Let's see. We got ourselves G13. We got ourselves H13. We got another for H13. Any uh, other ideas? We got ourselves an L13. E11. J13. K14. J13. All right, this is a good selection of moves to look at. All right, so no, 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 no Tanukis. No Tanukis. So the main point behind, let, let's take a look at D first. So the main point behind D, of course, is uh, uh, maybe a stone to uh, help attack white later by threatening to split white in half. So the idea itself isn't terrible. But uh, it's uh, pretty difficult to uh, pull off, I fear. Um, black stones are still kind of thin. And anyway, white has a lot of uh, ability to live on the side. Yeah, black is, black is kind of thin after this. And black loses any forcing moves at C11. You know, or C7, C7. Uh, without that kind of exchange, if uh, black takes a move like this later on in the game, I'm talking about not right now, white may feel obligated to jump. But uh, with that, with the, if he already has C11 played, then uh, C7 just becomes Gote. So you're giving up a fair amount for uh, difficult to see uh, returns. So the other category of moves we can look at is uh, the F and C moves. So the problem with the, the F move here is it does force black and chase black, but uh, let's see what happens. So white runs, and black goes up, and white goes up, and black goes up, and then white jumps. And uh, now the question is, well, hmm, what, is, uh, what does Black do here? I mean, can his wall do anything? Uh, it's questionable. I mean, his wall, you know, White has this relatively strong group over here. It's not 100% alive. It's not going to die anytime soon. And, uh, you know, Black's wall just isn't very effective. And uh, White's J17 stones, they're, they're pretty relatively well connected. So it, it's pretty tough for a uh, eh, little bit inefficient, but it, it, Black's wall is uh, very inefficient, and Black can't really be thrilled with uh, this result. It's the same idea with a move like C. Getting uh, that jump out there doesn't really uh, help that Black that much. It chases White for the sake of chasing White, but then after the chasing, uh, there's not really much the stone can do. So, uh, the correct move here, actually, oh, chasing is fine, but you have to have a, a, a reason, a, a, something that you're shooting towards with your chasing. I mean, just chasing for the sake of, well, I'm going to just chase you is uh, not a good way to play Go. Right, attack for profit. So E, the cap here, once again, the cap is a superb move. It uh, does a very effective job. Now, let's say that uh, white wants to... Uh, go and try and live. There's a lot of uh, fancy things that can happen here, but if black just plays nice and simply and keeps white inside, you uh, have a lot of potential variations that can happen, but uh, one of the more common ones, or one of the simplest ways for white to live is to shoot at this weakness. This is a common weakness in black's shape, and white aims at the weakness. And now th This is a very good move to look at. Uh, C17 is a great forcing move. It forces black to choose. Black can capture it, of course, but uh, it lets white take e18 in sente, which is very valuable, because now white's going to build himself the startings of a base. And now he's using g14 very well. And white connects up. And uh, black makes sure his stones are safe. And white can uh, complete his eyes and make sure he lives. And white lives now, but uh, black is pretty happy. I mean, Black has uh, made himself a, a safe center group, 
and he's made himself more points with uh, his uh, Q16 group, and now he gets this lovely uh, R9 peep. So by doing all these forcing moves, he has uh, made himself a safe center group, and uh, yeah, he's uh, got himself something really nice here. Also, the D14 group has been weakened by uh, this whole fighting. Uh, he has less forcing moves against uh, the top left, and uh, when uh, Black Next decides to play C7 or similar, it's uh, basically 100% Sente. So yeah, Black is uh, very happy at this point. But you don't need to see this exact sequence. The main point behind this move is that uh, you're forcing White to move in the direction that you want him to move in. And uh, this uh, forcing him into uh, these stones is very effective with the cap. Now this this is a, a very this is a let's see I uh when a uh, sun sun almost always got to ah yeah that's a uh, it's a little bit off topic but uh, absolutely that can be a very uh, good topic for discussion it's uh I still make mistakes on the topic <laughs> oh learn to count yeah if only uh, if only it was that easy so black has just played a. Did I go over the A option earlier? Oh, no, I guess I didn't go over the A option. Did I? Right, so the the, the A, B option. So, I mean, Black can do this. First of all, I, I think Black's shape is still a little bit awkward. Um, I guess also the problem is, you know, it just seems White does this. And then I don't know where Black is supposed to really go to continue. I mean, the center is wide open. And... Uh, not really that much that Black can really do with his uh, supposed cutting stones. I mean, there's just not much else to do from here. You know, White's group isn't going to die anytime soon, and the center's pretty open. So, uh, going back to this for a second. So, Black has played A, and White has decided that he is just, uh, as I'm sure has happened, he just dives on into a really deep moyo and just says, I'm going to make this stone live and destroy all the points that you have, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, Black plays A, and White rushes in and plays B. And now it is Black's turn, and Black wants to try and punish the arrogant move. Any ideas? What should uh, Black do about it? Let's see, we got ourselves K14. Cap. Any other ideas? F seventeen K fourteen Ah K fourteen okay. Alright, so these are uh, three good moves to look at. So this move does help to make uh J sixteen stronger in terms of giving it a base, but it also kind of ignores uh L sixteen. And I guess the problem that I have here is that uh if white perhaps tries something like this, he can end up uh, jumping himself out. And he might not be 100% safe, but uh, it's not as easy to attack him as it might have been. So black can make himself some points with F17, but the, the idea we have to focus on is how to uh, hurt uh, L16 the most, rather than make uh, J16 the safest. So, ah, the cap. So the cap is an interesting move. Um, you could make a fair center with the cap, but the problem with the cap is after white splits here, you can make your, your knights jump. Yeah, but, you know, you make two walls in the center, but, uh, I mean, really, can, can you really solidify this in a few moves? It's, it's just really, really wide open. I mean, yeah, K4 kind of ruins it. It's just so hard to make solid points with this kind of floaty center. I mean, there's not really any weak group for black to really attack. Isn't top still open? Which top? Top? Like top? Yeah, yeah, top is open. Sure, there's invasion there. I'm not saying the, the top left is all white's territory. Of course not. But uh, these two stones, I mean, it's... Uh, it's it's really hard to say that they're going to get black a huge amount of points. Whereas in comparison, sure, their invasion's possible on the left, but white is nevertheless, no matter what black does, is going to make a good chunk of points in this upper left area. Huge amount of points. I mean, 
J16 is on its last breaths. And, uh, you know, whichever side black invades, white's going to build a huge wall on the other side. I mean, white could invade here, white could invade here, white could invade here, or somewhere else. But wh whichever way white does, black is just going to take the other. I mean, white invades A, black just builds a wall around it and makes a, a huge moyo around uh, the B area. You know, white, uh, black invades B, white's just going to do the opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So, black stones. Black stones, thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, yeah, this is kind of just a, a floaty center. This is making a center purely for the sake of making points, which usually we want to avoid. So the simplest move here, actually, is, uh, yeah, the K14 move is right. This is a very powerful move. It's, it's very, very simple. It's here is white stone. I'm going to shove it against my gigantically powerful wall. And if white tries to be flexible and uh, knights jump out, what do you think? Any ideas for uh, what black should do about it? Yeah, it's a great move. Yeah, L12 is a very powerful move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good proverb. And yeah, I mean, so what? If if white, you know, really struggles around with all of his might, you know, maybe he'll live. I mean, if white just goes all out to make eyes in there, maybe he can make his two eyes. But what's going to be the result of that? I mean, black's just going to build this huge wall all around it and end up making even more points for himself. So at the end of the day, you know, white's, uh, yeah, black's going to have huge influence everywhere. White is just not going to be happy with this result no matter what happens. So, uh, yeah, big moyo pie. Ha, ha, ha. Oops. Okay, so no, these last few three problems are uh, more advanced than the other th the other stuff. The other stuff was more uh, uh, simple moves, but it was more choosing between uh, you know is the cap right, is the 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 diagonal right, is you know the shoulder hit right, you know which one is the right one. So these what we're gonna see are uh, more uh, advanced situations, and these I didn't uh, uh, make. These I took from uh, actually a book. So uh, these are this is from a. a pretty advanced book. So I, uh, this first one, let me see, uh, whoops, that wasn't good. Here, we are at uh, this situation. So this is a game from uh, two, uh, two uh, what, Insei, I think, who are playing. Uh, so they're both pretty strong. And uh, now the decision is for uh, black, after white has jumped himself out to M9, black has these center kind of floaty stones, white has these kind of center floaty stones, and the question for black is now, okay, how do I uh, attack these stones? Any uh, ideas? Black to play? Yeah, this is a pretty hard one. I uh, I guessed like four different moves on the on this question. Let's see. We have uh, here. We have uh, here. We have here. These are three moves. These are three good moves to look at. Oh, oh, do we have some cheaters? Guys, are we cheating? Am I going to have to not print these SGFs until actually I do the lecture? I hope we're not I don't hope we don't have anyone who's cheating. That would uh that would make me sad. <laughs> That's just Ukashu's uh ah. Uh, yeah, so L7 is the right move. And it's a very very tricky move to see. Well, despite what Frozen may think, it is a very tricky move to see if you haven't seen it before. So the obvious thought is, well, what about white cutting it in half like this? But the problem is this doesn't work because black just responds here. And if white connects here, black ends up cutting him in half. So white is not happy 
when this happens. Yeah, it's very painful. So this kind of move is very, very hard to deal with. I mean, if white just tries some sort of, yeah, exactly. If white just tries some sort of awkward shape move like this, you know, black just does this. And uh, he's gotten ahead in the, uh, the pushing battle. Now, this isn't to say that uh, L8, this is a terrible move. This isn't a terrible move at all. But uh, it's just not as severe. It uh, lets white get out a little bit easier. And it uh, makes Black's attack less severe. So this is, uh, so I mean, L8 might get, uh, you know, maybe 7 or 8 points out of 10. But uh, L7 is just a truly, truly uh, evil move that is uh, very, very hard to find. Even if Frozen may think it is the easiest thing to find. So. <laughs> yeah, undoubtedly, a Thai gym would probably be popular. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, Thai Gym ratings are totally different than uh, KGS ratings. I can hit 7 on 2 on Thai Gym. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't help. I agree. Yeah, exactly. I can hit 7 on, on Thai Gym. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't mean much. <laughs> so, let's, uh, let's get to the point where we're... Okay, so here's the point. White has just played uh, L5... Naturally. What do you mean, can I keep it? Can you keep KGS 5 done? Oh, can you keep your KGS 5 done? <laughs> oh, are you 5 done? I didn't know that. I thought you were just dash. What does dash mean anyway? <laughs> anyway, enough joking. Okay, so we're in this situation. And uh, the obviously White has played L5. With the intent of, uh, oh, sure you will. Sure you will. And so we're at the situation, and White has just tried to nullify Black's Moyo by playing uh, L5. And uh, so now it's Black's turn. And uh, the area we want to look at right now is the, uh, well, we're not going to look at the local area. Don't necessarily just jump to J5. What we're going to look at is the whole board. It may be local, it may not be local. But uh, if Black wants to attack something, what might be the most open area for black to do something about white's territory in general? Yeah, the top. There's a lot of uh, open stuff there. So, what uh, attacks might there be? Uh, J16, I mean, you might be able to build something in the center with J16. But, uh, seems a little nice. I mean, white's just going to end up doing this. And it's all going to become solid points. And then black still needs to do this to make it complete. And I mean, sure, he has a center, but, uh, you know, what's it going to do? I mean, white has uh, L5. It's kind of hard to make it solid. D17. D17. Ah, huh, that's an interesting move. I didn't think about this. Hmm. Well, if... Uh, I would probably just do this as uh, white. Yeah, I would just clamp... Rather than do anything fancy, just give black that, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, white's pretty safe. <laughs> Frozen, have you seen the book? <laughs> no, M17 is a great forcing move, he's right. Hmm? Uh, once a week, usually. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, Invincible is a great book. So actually, yeah, M17 is a great forcing move. Because it forces White to play here, and it opens, and it makes White's shape a little bit weaker. So what's the move now? Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Very simple move. And this forcing move at M17 has provided a critical Aji. Let's see why. If White attempts to seal him in with the normal sealing technique... Suddenly, Black has this move at his, disposable, at his disposal. Let's uh, see what happens. When White decides to cut, suddenly, White is having some problems. He has to descend here and let Black escape. If he fails to do that, uh, Black does this. And it's... a. Uh, not exactly easy for uh, white to manage now. 
we yeah we could say it's very difficult now for uh, white to play this out did you find it all star hmm I would have missed l18 no I also missed l18 actually no I, I found the m17 move and I found the h17 but I did not see the really cool Aji that you could do with uh, l18 <laughs> I, I know I know I know I know I, it would have been really nice and trust me, I know. I know you do. So yeah, it's a, a great technique, but it's a very, it's kind of a subtle thing that's very hard to find. So this is a uh, let's see, where's that uh, last one? Ah, here's the last one. Where is it? All right, so we have this situation. Oops. So this is a really, really hard move to get right, and I got I can happily say I got this move when the book asked me, I got this really, really, really wrong. And uh, when the book showed me why I was so wrong, it's like, oh, well, obviously, of course I'm wrong. But uh, it's one of those things that n very, very few players can really uh, bring themselves... Oh, oh you, you were showing this. Okay, so... Yeah, 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 okay. So, now the move is white to play. White to play? Any ideas? Black has just uh, threatened his territory. We have P2. We have N4. We have Q2. All right, and we have O3, and we have N6, and yellow, yes, that is a brilliant deduction that I wish I had made. So uh, I my own choice was this, but uh, this is a very bad move here because there's just so much algae inside here. Now, in my defense, uh, an Insei actually also played this move in this game. So a very, very strong player also made this mistake. So it's very, very hard. This is what happened in their game. And it's really, really hard to kill black. And the end result is this. And white is really, really, really depressed with this result. His stones are doing nothing at all, except living with two points. And uh, Black has made himself beautiful shape while splitting him in half. Now, in actuality, the move that most players cannot bring themselves to play is this move, which is a superb move that is uh, the correct answer. Push twice. Yes, and then black connects under. And so then white tanukis. And uh, white takes uh, 0 017. So the thing here is, uh, you know, white doesn't have an easy game exactly from here. I mean, it was very, very painful for white to have N3 done to him. But uh, nevertheless, the, the game is playable. White stones are not entirely ruined. And uh, yeah, it's uh, still a game. But the reason being, if we look back in the game, uh, White made a mistake in the original Joseki. P3 is a uh, awkward move. Now, when this happens, I'm looking, asking any of the, uh, especially any of the Don players in the room, if they have any ideas. If uh, they have any ideas for White to play now, it's a really interesting uh, Joseki as it's supposed to be done. Any ideas White to play? Anyone's feel free to guess. We have a uh, R6, P5, P5. Yeah, this is a kind of an obscure Joseki. Very obscure. Q4. Whoa, that's intense. O6. Yep, P5 is the proper move. 
and then black will usually descend and then kick and then black will descend and then white has a great forcing move here and then a pincer yep and uh, now this is the the proper way to do it now the way that uh, white did it in the game leaves him with very very awkward shape giving black uh, two forcing moves I mean everyone loves playing the kick and stand but the thing you have to remember about it is it leaves two weaknesses behind a peep and a potential connect under so if you do it too many times while attempting to take territory it uh, can end up kind of weak and uh, leave you potentially vulnerable. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, oh, let's see, uh, yeah, that uh, basically ends the lecture for today. Um, I will try and post it on uh, YouTube when I uh, get a chance, but I hope you all enjoyed it today. Um, what book? Oh, the book was uh, Shuko's uh, The Only Move, Volume 2. These uh, last few problems. Or, uh, it's an incredibly difficult book. I mean, I routinely miss at least half the problems in it. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah, I will uh, hope to see you there too. Mmm. Go problems don't like me either. I know the feeling. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any ideas for uh, next week, uh, feel free to throw me a line and I'll uh, see what I can do. So, uh... <laughs> All right, I will uh, see you all tomorrow, or tomorrow, next week. So uh, adios until then. Let me end this little camera thing.